Have you ever wondered what happens when you don't put a resistor on an LED? Well, you get to go back and paint over the eyes. Nice. So here's an armature head for scale, and this is an 0402 yellow LED. I'm all out of pre-soldered ones, so I'm going to have to solder some myself. These are about the biggest ones, actually, that'll fit into the heavy stubber that goes on top, and they're big enough to do both auto cannons as well. If you want to know more about LEDs and basic soldering, I have videos for both of those right here. And of course, the key to soldering any LED is to make sure it works before you go any further. So onto that little heavy stubber that goes on top. I've completely cut off the front of this barrel. I don't need the barrel at all. I've drilled a hole in the front here and out the bottom, and I'm actually just gonna replace it with a 3D printed part that has a hole in it already, so I don't have to drill that hole. Now comes that LED that we soldered. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna pinch it and then give it a nice 90 degree turn so it's actually facing forward from the wires. I've also clipped the top of the wires flush to the LED. Now I'm gonna wire this through the 3D printed part and then through the main body of this all the way down. I'm gonna make sure everything fits and everything threads well, and then I'm gonna seat the LED in the tip of the barrel. And once I get that right where I want it, I'm gonna come back and glue it all together. You may notice here that the wire actually comes behind the little peg that sticks into the carapace on the top of the armature, and I want that there so I can actually align it and have it kind of fit where it should fit. So I'm gonna drill a hole behind all that mess to actually put these wires through. I can get, get away with a pretty small hole so I'm not too worried about it sticking out. I wanna make sure the barrel's aligned and looking good and test it probably 100 more times. And the longer this rattles around by itself, the more chance that it will break. So I'm just going to mount this right into the carapace pretty much as soon as I can. So I'm threading that through the hole that I put in the back there. Now what I'm actually going to do is pile on a little extra super glue right where that wire comes into the hole. And I'm actually going to put super glue on the tip to put this in. I could use plastic glue, but for this I really want to make sure that I have a little ball of super glue to protect that wire. So I'm kind of placing it the way I want. And now here's the key little bit of super glue here to make sure that you have some strength in that wire for when you go to solder it so if you tug on it it doesn't pull it through the whole system. And that'll bring us to the auto cannons of the armature. I'm only going to show you how I did one but again I'm using a 3d printed part that I've designed myself so games workshop this is totally legal. So we're going to thread the LED through the barrel this is probably the easiest and oddly hardest part at the same time. So once this is threaded through and I'm kind of happy with the positioning of it I'm going to put a drop of super glue on the actual LED itself, and then this will basically pull in to glue at the very tip of the barrel behind the little muzzle brakes. That way you get a nice effect. So I've cut the tip off of this, and I've made sure the hole is the right size, and otherwise there's holes all the way through this. So I've had to drill holes into the little arm plate here. I'm just going to clean that up, make sure that I can get wires through it. So oddly enough, the wires going through the main body of the gun are easy, so I'm going to actually thread them through the arm piece first so I can assemble the main gun body around the barrel and the arm piece. This is where a little bit of patience and a good set of tweezers are really important. Getting these wires to come out and take a 90 degree turn can be difficult. Sometimes like I'm doing here, I have to pull out and kind of thread back in and through, but it's a really good effect when you're done, so it's worth taking the time to hide your wires well. So now that I have both threaded parts that are difficult done, it's time to get the body aligned and the body attached. So when I'm going to put this together, as I'm going to put this together, I'm going to super glue the wires kind of to the body of the gun, as well as the barrel to the gun, because um, that just needs some super glue. But otherwise, I'm going to put this all together without glue and then come back with some Tamiya Thin and then touch the edges so you can actually get some plastic glue action around it. So I ended up noticing when I started painting these actually that I've kind of done these backwards. So I've done it so the drum magazines are kind of facing inwards. And the reason I did that is because I assembled them so the ejection port would be going away from the night. Little did I know that was wrong, but it's fine. Now that I know the sound works, I can remove the jack all told. All the USB jack is gone now. Um, the reason I'm doing this is it's a little too tall to fit under the base with it on, and I'm only using it to download the sound on there once, and that is what it is. So this sound is going to be stuck this way forever. So I've set up the base of this by cutting out some holes for the soundboard, um, the little squares for the battery, 
and then I've actually cut a circular hole and glued some um, Green Stuff World mesh into it, and that's going to be for the speaker later. I'm going to worry about actually gluing the speaker in after everything is painted to make sure that I don't get any paint or varnish onto the speaker. And right now I'm just checking to make sure that nothing comes proud of the bottom of the base and it'll sit flat. So it was at that point I realized I didn't have a button on. So I went ahead and I put a button in here. That's what that big old pile of green stuff is. Now, I don't like gluing the buttons in because the glue can seep into the button and stop it from working. So I use some green stuff to make sure that's not a thing. Now it's time to sort all the wiring. And you see this right here? That's where all the wires are coming down from the feet. For this night, I have three wires. Two for power, positive and negative, and one is a button. That button is actually going to be bussed directly to the soundboard as well. So when I press the button, it'll both tell the Arduino and the soundboard that it's time to do its thing. The other two wires obviously are for power, for obvious reasons, will also need to get bussed to the soundboard that's at the bottom as well. So I'm going to have a split on both of those. I'm attaching the switch here to negative um, so that the switch will turn on and off the negative lead there uh, and that will have a power button. The other side of the button gets wired directly into ground because that's how everything's getting triggered. If you want to know more about the soundboard, I have a whole video on that here. That'll bring us to this point here. So the big blue wire here is the trigger, then the black and red is positive and negative, and all these other little wires are the wires that are going to the LEDs specifically. Now, I'm going to run everything through power, so all of the ground wires are going to get tied together, and all of the positive leads for the LEDs is going to get soldered to a resistor and then soldered to the board. Well, they didn't all get a resistor, though. So when watching through these videos, I noticed that right about there, I've actually wired the iLEDs directly to power into the board, and uh, no, no resistor. That's, that was my mistake. With the top carapace being so close to the exhaust, I didn't want to actually have this removable, so I decided to glue it on. But for some added security, I'm actually putting some two-part epoxy resin here, and I'm just kind of coating over the Arduino to make sure that any of the connections that are there will stay there, and nothing will kind of fold into itself and short out anywhere. Got to make sure we get one last test in here before we actually glue the top on to make sure each piece is working. So now these are all done and painted, it's time for speakers. These speakers came with JST connectors that I'm going to clip off and save for a different project. These speakers actually have basically stickers on the top of them, so it's kind of just a peel and stick process which makes that part of it really easy. So I'm just going to stick it straight to the mesh like so. Now that they have these wires stripped, I'm going to come in and tin them before I actually push them into the through holes on the soundboard, and that will actually give me sound. That's not too much to do. So now I just have to solder the speaker in. Um, there are four pins, for two for left, two for right. I'm only using mono sound with one speaker, so it doesn't matter which side I go to, as long as you're soldering the positive and the negative, respectively. Now with everything soldered in place and everything done, I do want to make sure that it stays that way. So I'm actually going to come in with some two-part epoxy resin and just paint everything with a really crappy brush, because this stuff can't really wash off a brush. But that'll give me a nice coat over everything to make sure that all of the pins are going to stay where they are and nothing can end up shorting out if it goes over something that conducts electricity at some point weirdly. And here's the final product. Well, this is a fun project to do. I have links in the description of all the little bits and bobs that I use to make these. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment and I'll get back to you. If you want to support this channel, I now have a Patreon. And thank you guys for watching.